Shall we go? Shall we continue on? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna, you know, this is a little bit of stuff I talked when I talked to the some of you in a fourth grade class, but I'm gonna kind of talk about it a little bit more, and I'm gonna do some other stuff too. Um, a lot of the problems that I work on related to economics now. So, so in economics, I do things like build mathematical models that are supposed to capture the economy and supposed to tell us things and be informative. And and and, and so I so I so I actually use mathematics a fair amount, uh, but to help me think about stuff. But a, a a really important part of all of that is what I think of as uncertainty, and how do we really capture it? How do we think about it? And and uh, and, and you know what. What implications it has in a whole variety of ways, including it. So, like uncertainty. Um, at some point in time, you'll go to college. You'll go to college. You'll try to figure out, well, what field do I want to major in? When you think about what field you want to major in, you'll want to say, well, if I major in this field, what what will I do after I'm done with college? And then, well, at some point in time, you might want to think, well, maybe I want to get a job. Hi, welcome. Come on in. Do you have another chair? Yeah. You know, maybe you know, maybe I want to get a job. Well, will there be a lot of jobs in my area or not? Or is this, I, I mean, who knows at this point in time? Um, but all the time we have to make decisions, making guesses as to what's going to happen in the future. We're not going to know for sure. It's just impossible. Is there, is there, we're not going to know for sure. But we still want to kind of make sensible decisions. And and this really is an important important area for that, that, that um, when we try to think about how how the whole economy and all of its complexities work together. We have to all, always be thinking about um, what's the impact of uncertainty. So what's the impact? Of, and so, um, so, it, so like you know, when you get up, you know, when you go out and buy new clothes, you have to make guesses as to what, as to what the weather's going to be like. Or say, when you get up in the morning, you have to make guesses as to whether it's going to snow later in the day and stuff like this. I mean, and and, and on a lot of things we're just not certain about. We're all the time having to make guesses. And we, and, and we hope to make good guesses, and uh, but 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 on the other hand, we have to adjust to the fact that our guesses are not not, uh, are not always going to be right. So that's what I want to think about about uncertainty. Okay. So let's try to make it simple. Let's, let's let's start off making it simple. So there's a cup in here. I, we can verify what's in this cup. It's got four ping pong balls. Two orange. To green. The same is true of all of these five. Okay. So there's one possibility. Okay. One possibility is that we do the following. We take this cup, we kind of shake it up a lot, and we kind of let one come out. Like in this case, it's orange. There are other orange and green. And I and 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 I could say, well, suppose this is the it's the following situation. If it's orange, I can get a really good donut. If it's green, I just get an okay donut. That's not quite as tasty. Okay. <coughs> so it's uncertainty. I, I I don't know which kind I'm gonna get. Or I could make it. You know, I could get maybe a hundred dollars if it's if it's orange, or fifty dollars if it's green. Okay. So one possibility is you just take the outcome of this alone. And that's, you know, that reflects uncertainty. And so people can kind of compute. We know that there's a kind of, roughly speaking, a 50-50 chance of getting orange or green. Um, <coughs> and so we can kind of, you know, we can mathematically figure out what the chances of different outcomes are going to be very, very easily. Now suppose, instead of this, we do the following. We take this, we take this, we take this, and we take this. We take five of these. Okay? We draw one out of each of these five. And then you get together with your friends, and then each of you kind of just split the pot, just split the outcome. There's still going to be randomness across the five. You know, we'll get, you know, we'll get, you know, if we do this, we'll get some oranges, some greens. And this one, we're either going to get an orange or a green. When, when I do all five, I'll get, my, I might get three oranges and two greens, or blah blah blah. Okay, that's also uncertainty. Um, which do you think you like the better? Do this just by yourself with just one of these, or to kind of do five and kind of share the you know, share the outcome. First of all, what do you think is more uncertainty? Has more uncertainty, and then which one do you think you might like? 
you know, there's no right, there's no right answer to this. So this isn't like a, a mathematic, uh, like a test in mathematics. This is the only what you'd think would make this would be good. Yeah. I think when you use all five cups, that's yeah. more uncertainty because there's like a one in five chance that you're gonna get a grape juice uh -huh. instead of like all oranges. Uh huh. So it's much more random. But when you just have the one cup, uh -huh. it's still a fifty-fifty chance. But with five, yeah, it's not. It's not as 50-50? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So when you talk about with the more uncertainty, that's a good, you know, so that's a good point. Uh, what does that really mean in this case? So part of what I want you to think about, and, 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 and I would agree with you about the more uncertainty completely, is the fact that when I take the outcome of this, think about as like $100 versus $50. When I take the outcome, I'm going to have each, you know, like maybe, maybe five of you each draw one out of here, and then you'll just agree in advance that whatever comes up, you'll just take the to total pot of money and split it amongst you. Now, now the fact that you're splitting that evenly actually changes things a little bit here. Because it's, it, you're right, the overall uncertainty across the five, certainly there's much more uncertainty, absolutely. But how about if you agree to kind of share in it? So it's not that it's not that each one of you has attached the, the outcome of one of these, but each of you gets to share the outcome of uh, across all of them. So what do you think that does? Yeah. It verifies. It makes your chances that you're going to get the same amount of money yeah. as other people. Yeah. It makes that a greater chance. Uh huh. Because if you just took one cup. Yeah. And let's say your friend got the other cup, yeah. and you got green and they got orange. Yeah. That. One third is different, but if you add it together, yeah, like you get two oranges and one green, uh -huh. you have enough to split between four people, uh -huh. and they all get the same. Uh -huh. 50, 50, 50, 50. So, if it if it's say like a hundred and fifty, a hundred for for orange balls and fifty for green, so on average you get seventy five. So if you draw one of these, you'll get either a hundred or a fifty. If you do this averaging trick, there's a bunch of other possible outcomes that could be. But if you actually look at kind of how much, kind of how much they vary, there's a sense in which they're going to vary a whole lot less. And if I do this over a whole bunch more of these, it's going to be more and more like I'm going to just end up getting, I can just predict I'm going to get $75 almost no matter what. So the more of these I do, the more. Um, so what's going to happen is as I add these more earns and I average, it's going to start, the, the amount of uncertainty is going to get closer and closer to just 75, to just getting $75. There's still going to be variation because, you know, I'm not going to get, because I got five earns, I'm not going to get exactly, you know, two oranges, uh, the same number of oranges and greens. That's actually impossible here. But the amount of uncertainty is, um, that you get just because you're agreeing in advance to share it is less. So, so do you get the basic idea? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So imagine the following. I'm sure your parents are good drivers, but let's, but, but, but let's suppose that they might get in an accident. And that's going to happen by, you know, that's going to be, and that's going to be, um, that's, and let, let's just think of that as <coughs> uncertainty. You know, they're, they're not going to go get an accident on purpose. It's just going to something, something's going to happen to them. To their car. Nothing bad, nothing bad. They're just going to get a dent or not. That, that requires, it requires taking it to an auto repair shop, but no bodily injury. It's just anything like that. Okay? And one possibility is that your parents say, well, I'll just agree to, if that happens, I'm just going to, if I, I, I'll just, you know, I'll just pay for it myself. But often what they'll do is they will get, well, they always do, because many states even require this, they'll get so called insurance. What, what does that mean? Means that all the you know all the randomness across all the you know all of your different parents and their potential accidents all gets combined in one pool, and and, and they kind of share this uncertainty. <coughs> that means that as a consequence, they they you know um, they pay for someone else to take the insur uh, the uncertainty. And that all has to do with this someone else being an insur uh, the insurance company knows there's lots of people. Lots of potential for accidents, and they can just average across all of this. So, so the insurance company itself doesn't face all that much uncertainty because they got a whole bunch of different people doing things. If your parents had to do it on their own, they would fa face a lot more uncertainty. So this type of thing shows up in uh, in, a, in a whole variety of contexts. It's kind of when can we do things like average out that uncertainty? Um, and sometimes you can, like in this automobile case, 
and sometimes you can't. So if a big event happens to the entire economy that affects everybody, like you know, recently we had so-called financial crisis, you can't just average that across people because everyone's exposed to it. Or, or like, a, um, or if I, uh, um, if you have some big event like a, um, a hurricane reach, reaches a whole region, then everyone's hit by it. And so the only way you uh, deal with that uncertainty is you have to go across different regions and the like. But this whole idea about, about looking across different sources of randomness to try to reduce, to reduce this impact is, is something that's really commonly done. And, and it's sometimes possible, but not always possible. And for people like me, kind of figuring out when that's impossible, when it's possible or not, turns out to be a rather important task of what of kind of what we're doing. Um, so you have, it's a saying that that uh, I I don't know how much meaning it has. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's kind of like that. It's, 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 the motivation for that is kind of stuff like this. So sometimes the nature of the uncertainty is that when I uh, the outcome is the same across all these different balls, and then it's and, and, and then that's something I just can't average out. So that stuff is important to people like me about when can you kind of go across things and try to diminish the amount of uncertainty on an individual basis versus when can can you not? So this is okay. So does that make some sense? Yeah. And then you can imagine, here I've got five, suppose I had 100 of these, and then there's going to be even less. And if I had, like, you know, by the time I get to 1,000, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, the amount of uncertainty an individual would face would be small. Overall, we face a ton of uncertainty, but, but each individual's piece of it is going to be really quite small. Okay, so that's one thing. So now, now let me do, I want to change, I, wa I want to change this a little bit in two ways. But let's do one at a time. So let's, so let's let me put these to the side for the moment. This one, there's two orange balls and there's two green balls. This one has some balls on it, and I'm not going to tell you how many. Okay? So you, so you can go and, and, and be your choice. We'll say, which urn do I want to draw from? So in both cases, we'll shake it up and we'll pull, pull something out of it. So like in this case, we'll shake it up and we'll pull out something. Like in this case, it has, happens to be orange. Here, I'm not going to tell you how many it is. Shake it up and pull something out. I don't know what comes out of this. This case is green. If you had a choice between this and this, this one I tell you there's exactly a number of balls, and this one I don't. Which one do you think you might like? Yes. Um, I would go with the one without the question mark because we know how much of a chance we have to get an uh, orange ball against the green ball. You, you, mean the, you mean this one here, the one where I know the number? Yeah, so you, so you would pick this one over this one. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. Well, I pick the question mark one because uh -huh. if we don't know, we don't, let's say green is 100 and orange is 50. We don't know that there's not all four greens mm -hmm. in that mystery box. Right. But we do know that we pulled out an orange. Uh huh. But this, let's say we didn't know that. Yeah. So there could be a great chance that we would get a hundred. Uh huh. But if you go for the other one, it's just 50-50 no matter yeah. what. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Someone else? Yes. I would pick the one without the question mark because I heard that um, Jonathan and Chris were going to be on like a few balls. <laughs> 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 Actually, there are four balls in here. <laughs> I will tell you there's four balls in here. <laughs> maybe, maybe I did a bad job at shaking them. I think, I, I, think, I, th I think that's probably the case. But that's, yeah, that's, that's good thinking. Looking for other information that would convey about this is, would be a very useful thing to do. Absolutely. That, that, that'd be a smart strategy. So the answer to this question, there's not a right and wrong answer to this. Okay, there's not, you know, it's, it's um, uh, uh, but, but sometimes, the th but the thing I want to kind of emphasize is the fact that there's th different types of uncertainty here than here. This one is what, actually, the, 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 there's a theory of mathematics called probability theory that's all about, you know, assigning probabilities to things. And a lot of 
the origins of that whole mathematical literature was to study so-called games of chance, um, like rolling dice and stuff like that. It was all cases where you knew probabilities. But in, a, but, but in a lot of things we face in the real world, we're really not sure about, you know, even about probabilities and we have to make guesses and, and, and that's another source of uncertainty uh, that, that, uh, that happens to be important. And we may well approach situations like this differently than situations like this. So, okay. so that's a very important question. It doesn't have a right answer. It's just, uh, it's, it's just important to draw that distinction. See if I got some more pictures. So is, should I look at another, at a, no, I want to do one more thing first before I look at another, at another picture. Okay, I'm going to put this one to the side now. I'm going to go back to the five. Now I'm going to change the game a little bit. Think about these as being um, something which you do at uh, in the future. So you might do this next month, do this in two months, draw out of here in two months, this in three months, this in four months, or this in five months. Okay? So that's one possibility. The other possibility is the following. So that's, so that's one. Um, in fact, no, I'm sorry, let, 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 let me change it. Let me just put four. So, 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 so I want to draw new every period. Next month, two months, three months, four months. The other one I'm going to draw next month, but the outcome of what I draw next month determines what I get this period, this period, and this period. So let me just kind of, so like suppose I draw an orange ball. Let's suppose I get $100 next month, the month after, the month after, and the month after. And this one, um, I'm sorry, I misstated that. I just flunked my own, my, I just, I, let me try this again. This one I draw. If I draw orange, I get $100. If I draw green, I get 50 Tomorrow I draw again. I shake this one up, I draw something. If I get orange, I get, get 100 I get green, I get 50 Three months, same thing. Four months, the same thing. This one here, I just do it once. If I draw orange, then I get 100 every period. If I draw green, I get 50 every period. So these could be, you know, this could be dollars. It could be pieces, you know, nice pieces of candy to reward yourself at the end of a hard month, or, or you know, good and bad donuts, or something like that. Okay. So which one of these? Again, this doesn't have a right answer. Um, this, uh, so, so this isn't. Which one of these do you think you might like better? But did you understand the two different ones? Yeah. Yes. I would like take the four. Uh huh. Because if you take the one, then you have. Um, a greater chance of getting 50 for all the periods. And if you take the four, yeah. then you can get 100 and 50 and 50. Uh -huh. And you can just double it. Yeah. Yes. I choose the four also because if you choose just a single cup, yeah. then you get, if you choose 50, yeah. you get 50 all the way down, and that's yep. not as good as 100 all the way down. Yeah. They certainly are very different outcomes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and the fact we're doing it over time is kind of important here as well. Are there, uh, other thoughts about this? What do you think? It turns out that, um, again, there's no right answer to this. There's a lot of models that economists use that, that, that would make you completely not care about the difference between these two. However, there's models that I like um, that, that actually allow for the fact that you might like this one better than this one. Um, so again, there's not a right answer, but it does affect our thinking about this. Allowing for this difference here affects how we, ha how we think about things, all the way from how we think about the stock market behaves and a variety of other stuff in the, in, in the economy. So issues like this, you know, they seem like, like, like really um, 
basic questions, and they are, but they actually have ramifications for how economists think about problems. And again, I just want to show you that this is a different type of uncertainty. You know? Now it's how uncertainty unravels over time or how it plays out over time in different ways, and, 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 uh, and, and, and those issues turn out to be important. So again, there's no right answer here, um, I, I, but it's, I, I think these are fun things to think about. And in my field, I kind of almost have to think about them. It's natural to think about them. So, um, I don't know. Should we do more pictures, or what do you want to do? Pictures. Pictures, yeah. So let's talk about a few more pictures. Um, so let me put on this picture. This, this, this just depicts what we just did. Well, the first part of this depicts what we did. So before we did this comparison of this case, where it's uh, three and three, what we did two and two, versus this case. Okay? And, um, and, and kind of which one you might prefer. And there's a whole bunch of models, there are a whole bunch of, um, often p economists build models that say these, that that's your completely, you don't care which of these you want. You want. Um, but, but, but recently there's been focus on trying to look at um, situations in which you might actually prefer this over this. Uh, so those are j so that's just reviewing what I talked about. There's a very famous there's a there's a very famous so-called paradox that's uh, that's called the Ellsberg paradox. It's, it's about all this. And I was uh, I was familiar with Daniel Ellsberg for a variety of different reasons. A long time ago there was this war it was called the Vietnam War. And I'm very old. It means I was almost drafted to go to this war. This, pe this guy who's coming up with these, the, thinking about these uncertainties, also did something rather important by making more information about that war public to the whole, to, and, and it led to things like ending the war and ending the draft and like that. So there's a, there's a the, Ellsberg's famous, for, you know, if you Google, if you go on the computer and ask who Daniel Ellsberg is, you're not going to hear about this paradox. You're going to hear about the, his, his contribution to the so-called Pentagon Papers. But, it, but, but, but the same person did a very, wrote a very important paper in that treatment of uncertainty. And, and it all had to do with, with the, this experiment I just talked about. Now, when we think about, so this, you know, this is really easy, but the type of uncertainties we think about, so we have to think about, well, what's going to happen to the economy in five years and stuff like this? I mean, it's really hard to, to put really precise statements and make us think like this. We have to think much more like this about, well, there's a bunch of stuff we don't know. We make guesses. We, we, do, like, we do like you were suggesting, kind of make, you know, be, see if there's other easy, you know, a, aspects of, uh, of things so that, that we can think about that helps us figure out what's going on. So, so in practice, we're much closer to stuff like this. And I'm interested in models in, 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 in which evolve over time. So, so we kind of talked about this in this drawing over time. We're generally about models over time. And so one way to think about that is there's an urn you're facing every time period, but it kind of changes. So there's a question mark that there's red and that there's, uh, there's uh, blue balls and red balls here. Maybe there's a different number here tomorrow and a different number here the next day. So, so even if you c take the outcomes here, it tells you a little bit about this, but it's, but, 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 but you don't, you know, even through a P, you know, in, the, in, the, in this case here, if I had 100 of these, I, I, I would have a really good guess as a number of, you know, and I didn't know the number of orange and green balls, I would have a really good guess. Or, or I'm sorry, I should take this one that we didn't know, that I, yeah, yeah this one. If we, if, if I if I repeat it a hundred times, drawing out of this random, I, I, w I would get a very good idea of what the fraction is in there. But now imagine that the number of these balls changes in some arbitrary way or changes over time. So, 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 so then I have to use the information I have, and I have to think about how these might move over time, and that that, that, that makes it all the more complex. So uncertainty is really important. There's different ways to think about it. We've talked about some of those ways. And they have different, and they can have different kind of consequences, and, and, and it's a fascinating subject to, 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 to kind of see how this uncertainty can play out. But it's more like this is the problem that we're facing in, in, in the type of models that I, that I think about. So it's like this one over time with the numbers inside here changing. Okay, so yeah. Are there different names for the I'm sorry, are you in fourth grade? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Different types of uncertainty that you here and here. Yeah, there's different names. There's not a kind of a consistent. So, 
there's this famous uh, economist at the University of Chicago called Frank Knight. And, and, and Frank Knight, and it's, it's, it's also Keynes is writing this subject, drew, uh, drew this distinction between what he called risk, and that's the case. Risk was the case where you know all the probabilities. So he, they called that risk. And then Knight called this other thing uncertainty. For me, uncertainty is a broader concept. So more recently, this one here, uh, uh, economists would call ambiguity as a component of uncertainty. Uh, that you're not knowing the numbers is, to think of that as a contract, ri whereas risk you know stuff. So that's the way, you know, that's what the language people use. So. Now, I kind of have to invent jargon, so, you know, that's the nature of it. Um, so here's a weird picture. Actually, it's weird two pictures. about this guy. Hi. He did his work. This guy did his work. Uh, this guy's had, um, his name is Jacob Bernoulli. Jacob Bernoulli did stuff 300 years ago. He, um, he did something that was called, the, it's called the Law of Large Numbers. So that's a fancy name. I do, I do know what he studied. He studied urns like this where you don't know the number of balls there are. are. And what happens if you shake them up, draw one out? That gives you information. Do it again. Shake one up, draw it out. Do it again. Do it again and again and again. He says, well, you can actually figure out what fraction of orange balls and greens balls are. You got to keep on doing it over and over and over again. You know, you'll eventually figure things out. Jacob Bernoulli's Law of Large Numbers is how quickly do you figure things out? 300 years ago. It was a really beautiful, I mean, it's really, it, it, it was very impressive work at the time. I have, it still is very impressive. It's, it's uh, I guess a little bit over 300 years now, but 300 and some kind of a fraction years, years ago he did that. So that's, so I thought it was Jacob Bernoulli. What's that? <laughs> well, it's an impressionistic painting, so it's not so clear. It's not, not so clear on purpose. Um, it's a painting by, by, by this painter called Pizarro. Um, why do I have it here? Pizarro's painting is of a, a, is of a so-called marketplace. So think about this marketplace. So people come, they bring goods, and they sell them. What, when they come to the marketplace, they don't know how much, pe you know, are people going to kind of really want their goods? So they don't quite know how much they, goods to bring. They don't quite know how much to charge. So, so they face uncertainty. But they do make their best guesses. They make the appropriate adjustments for uncertainty, and then they, and, and they go and they trade with other people. Jacob Bernoulli's interest in this, not knowing about urns here, was to look at data, and in, in this case, social scientific data, and, and, and how we can learn from it, you know, how we can observe data and try to, over time, and figure stuff out. But for economists, we have to think about these people, too. So we as economists, we don't know, it, we don't know our model of a true economy. We have to deal with that uncertainty. We also have to have people inside their models. And they don't know what's going on exactly, and they have to deal with uncertainty. So this uncertainty from it, sh it shows up in these different perspectives. And this picture is supposed to capture that, 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 that these two things. I don't know. Do you like that picture? I think it's kind of weird, but what do you think? Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah. Why is my drawing look like old time China? Old time China? Yeah. I assume it was uh, Paris, but I'm not sure. Fran it's just the French painter, Pizarro? Pizarro. Anyway. Or the Italian, I don't know, what, whatever. I'm not sure. I, 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 we, I, we, could, we could look this up. Um, should we look at another painting? I, I, I've shown, I think I've shown some of you this one before. Before I go to this painting, there, there's a, because because the next painting is going to kind of bear on this as well. So there are things that are called lotteries, the states run. Oh, yeah. And what they do is they like have a bunch of ping pong balls, they stick them in this like hopper and it, and, and, and it blows them up, you know, blows them, mixes them all up, and then eventually numbers pop up. Okay. So it's like having these things with a whole bunch of balls, but the balls have numbers on them. Here we just have two. There are th there that have a whole set of numbers. Okay. Um, in 1980, I lived in in Pittsburgh. And they were having one, yeah, and the Pennsylvania Lottery would be held. And they had this on TV and everything. 
and one time what happens is, so there's something called pick six or something, pick three, I, I don't know, anyway. Uh, there's one of these lotteries, three, uh, 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 they have three different things going on, and then three numbers pop up. One time, sixes show up three times. Okay, so that could happen. You know, there's these three different things. There's in like numbers, you know, zero to nine. That you know, you could get three sixes. It turns out that they found out a whole lot of people, no, a small number of people, have bet a whole lot of money on sixes. Started looking at this more. The person who was like the television celebrity who was uh, 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 overseeing all this, that was a famous name at the time, he got together with some other people. Do you know what they did? They took the ping pong balls, and except for two numbers, three and sixes, they put some extra weight in them. But they didn't put them in this hopper blowing things up. By putting that extra weight in them, they, they just loaded, they just changed the whole probabilities. Mm -hmm. And they made it very likely that two numbers were going to come up. I think it was three and six, but I'm not sure what the two numbers were, but six was one of them. And so they bet on not just sixes, but they, best, but they, but they placed a bunch of bets on all these numbers uh, involving those two digits and, and, and made a lot of money. Turns out they weren't so clever that they were discovered eventually, and they, uh, people got sent to jail for doing this. So sometimes, you know, you have to be leery about these, uh, and, and this is kind of what this next picture is about, um, that the, you know, these, the, uh, these lotteries, you know, they're not always strange things can happen. So when we build models in economics, our models aren't always right, and sometimes we get fooled. And so we have to keep our eyes open getting fooled, um, even though it's not some criminal doing it to us. So, here, so here's another painting that's kind of capturing the same type of phenomenon. It's a painting by Latour. I, I just love this painting. And this painting's called The Cheat. Why is it called The Cheat? Because this person back here has got some stuff behind his back. He's not supposed to have behind his back. This person here thinks he's playing a fair, a fair game of cards. Uh, presumably, the dealer, given the eyes and everything, is 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 allowing to what's going on. And all this person pouring booze, maybe as well. But there's all that to get this person. So, so this person thinks he's playing some games of chance, where he can start computing, you know, figure out chances of different cards coming up, and blah blah blah. But eh, it doesn't quite work out that way because of this. Um, yes. Why is there money? Oh, this is a game that they actually bet money on. I, I, I don't like to do that, but <laughs> but they're trying to take money off this guy. This guy, in order to play the card game, you have to put money in here. And then if you win, you win the money. If you lose, you lose the money. So so the outcome of this actually involves money. It's called gambling. I don't, I don't advise you to do it, because there may be people out there out you know, that, that, that aren't very, that, but, but anyway. So this person thinks it's a fair game. But apparently it's not. It's, uh, so not surprisingly, this painting is called the cheat. Okay. So, so even in situations where you think you got everything figured out, you might want to be a little bit cautious because some. It's, I mean, it's not necessarily that someone's out to get you, but typically you may not be quite. You know, you may not be right, and and, and, the, uh, and, and the calculations might be wrong for some reason in ways that could fool you. And so you, yeah, the, the, that's another type of uncertainty about well. I do these calculations, but they might not be right. And, and that's the hardest part to, that's a hard thing to cope with, but it's kind of stuff we have to cope with all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the possibility that we're wrong in, in our calculations. Because, you know, when I build mathematical models, I wish they were perfect. They're not. They're wrong. But I hope they're pretty good approximations. But, you know, you always have to have your eyes open to how they might be messed up. And, uh, so now, this painting has another funny, uh, subtle story to it. And this is something that Amy discovered for me. Turns out there's two versions of this painting in two different museums. They're not, and they're very, very similar. They're not, and you know, they both claim to be by the tour, but uh, but I guess there's some controversy that one of the paintings itself might be a fake. So it, it's it's uh, wow. <laughs> so so uh, so not always cheating going on here. That might that, that the painting itself might be a bit of a oh. cheat. It might be a, it's, it, it, I'm in, uh, there's a there's a debate whether the, uh, both paintings are legit or not. So which is which is hard to know. So anyway, that, this is to get at this other notion of uncertainty, the fact that, the, uh, the fact that you know, even we can, you know, even we're great mathematicians and we can co compute probabilities of complicated things, they still may not be right because you know, our, our view of the world is not gonna ever gonna be quite perfect. And that, and that's the, for people like me, that's the hardest challenge out there. I mean, it's a, it, but, but yet it's an important one. 